from Hollywood, it's the B-B-B- Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are. Together again on the radio. Listen to this story from Billings, Montana. From the Billings Gazette. A 28-year-old woman who tried to beg and bribe her way out of a drunken driving arrest was convicted at a district court trial. Brenda Sue Craig showed little reaction to the jury verdict, which came at the end of a day-long trial before Judge Susan Waters. The jury of four men and two women took 30 minutes to reach a verdict in a case that was appealed from Justice Court. Waters immediately sentenced Craig, a Billings real estate agent, to six months in jail. With all but one day suspended. (laughs) So spend one day in jail. And a $685 fine. Craig will have until 5 p.m. Thursday to turn herself into the Yellowstone County Detention Center. I believe Yogi Bear is the uh, the warden there. <laughs> Waters also ordered Craig to complete a state alcohol treatment program and to pay the cost of her trial. The amount will be determined later. The trial included testimony from only one witness, a Yellowstone County Sheriff's deputy, who said he stopped Craig on February 21st, 2006, when the woman's pickup truck pulled out in front of his patrol car from the parking lot of a bar on Highway 312. Deputy Patrick Korb said he had to brake to avoid a collision. After watching the pickup swerve several times between the fog line and the center line, Corp said he stopped the truck at about 10.30 p.m. The traffic stop and Craig's subsequent arrest were recorded on a patrol car video and played for the district court jury. Corp said Craig smelled of alcohol, failed a field sobriety test, and refused to take a preliminary breath test at the scene. After Craig was handcuffed and placed in the patrol car, you're going to love this. After Craig was handcuffed and placed in the patrol car for the drive to the county jail, she began to plead with the deputy to release her. She then offered the deputy a favor in return for her freedom. Craig told Corb, I will show you my boobs. I will pay you. I will do anything. Anything, you ask? (laughs) She said she would do anything. Craig again failed a sobriety test at the county jail, refused to submit to a breath test. She was cited for first offense DUI and was released to her husband. Well, now he felt about watching her on video saying she'll do anything. That's great. By the way, where was the husband when she was out boozing it up at 10.30 at night at a bar in Billings, Montana? Where where was the husband then? (laughs) You got to wonder. She's not closing some big real estate deal. (laughs) Says here, Craig was convicted at a bench trial in Justice Court, but appealed the conviction to District Court. Before Craig's second trial, her attorney unsuccessfully sought to suppress the statements Craig made to the deputy. 
about him offering to show her boobs. Unbelievable. So uh, this story goes on, but look, that's the relevant thing. I mean, here's this woman about to be nailed for a DUI, and she says to the cop, I'll do anything, I'll show you my boobs. Now it brought up an interesting question, but then it brought up a second interesting question. I mean, the original question, of course, for people who are listening, you know, what have women done to get out of trouble? What have they offered to do? What have they dangled in front of you? in order to get themselves off the hook. But I also wonder on top of that, you know, what have women done to offer you something in trade? It could be anything. You know, they, uh, the woman who filled up her gas tank at the gas station then realized she forgot to bring her purse. The woman who didn't have money to pay for the pizza that was delivered. Right? The woman who needed to get to the front of the line at the supermarket because she was in a rush. I'm sure there's all kinds of situations where women find themselves to be the damsel in distress, and then they all, all they offer to do something really ridiculous, like the woman offering to show her boobs to get out of a DUI. So I'm wondering what experiences you have had with women who have done these kinds of things. Woman is desperate, and she'll offer to do all kinds of things. And I'm wondering also, uh, did the woman actually follow through? Like, did you say, all right, you'll do it. You'll actually, you'll do absolutely anything, right? Now let's see if you really mean it. Did you ever call a woman on it? Did you ever say, all right, do it? Did you ever let somebody off the hook because they did some favor for you? I'm just curious how often this kind of thing goes on. How often do women offer to show their boobs or perform sexual favors? Or do other demeaning, disgusting things? I'm wondering uh, if you've had this experience, if you ever met a woman who has offered to do something like this. And if you're a woman who has used these techniques or tactics to get out of things, I'd like to know about those as well. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. The only way to date nice guys all along are women who are not that attractive or are kind of chunky. Yeah, but I date a nice guy. You're probably kind of junky. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. The one 800 800 tom How often do women <laughs> make these offers? Like the woman in Billings, Montana, who offered to show her boobs to the cop to get out of a DUI. Bernie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey. Hey. I, I was calling to, t to let everybody know that it must be a male obsession because I offered my man booty duty and he took it. Well, what, what man is this? Oh, now he's my husband. Oh, now he's your husband. But who was he at the time? Oh, he was my boyfriend. Well, you, so you were already having sex with him. Well, yeah, I had sex before marriage. That was so. <laughs> so he, you know, I left the rent money. I left it on top of the of my car, and I drove off. And he was upset, and I figured the only way to get out of trouble was giving him something he wanted, and he wanted that, so I gave it to him. Really? Is that the yeah. last time you did that? It was the first time and the only time. Was it uh, uh, painful and humiliating? No, it wasn't humiliating at all. Was it painful? Uh, it was uncomfortable. Yeah, I felt like I had to. I see. You get over it. Hey, I'm sure you've tried it. Uh, well, put it this way. I've only done that upon request. But if you're going to do it right, you don't... What is that you're looking at on TV there, Gary? What is that a shot of? <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be a tennis match, and I'm seeing a woman with a wet tennis outfit and an erect nipple standing out under a pink tennis outfit. What channel is that? That's the uh, tennis channel. The uh, tennis channel? Uh, it's one of those Russian chicks. Oh, yeah, you know, it's interesting. You, you know, it'd be a one thing. If, or something like that. It'd be one thing if you were watching, you know, the girls next door and they were showing like a clip of tennis or something. This is the tennis channel. That's why I watch it. It's with Sharapova. Any chance to get a shot at Sharapova, I'm in. Do they do that? Oh, it's unbelievable. Really? 
I'm going to start watching this. Very nice. I'm about to join a new tennis club. I'm going to see if they have plasma screens down there. We'll see if they're watching this. Just uh, completely distract. Yeah, you know too what? bad we don't have the audio because the, it's all that grunting that goes on. Too. Oh, yeah. love that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That looked like a wet T-shirt contest. That was ridiculous. All right. Now, the TV rarely distracts me like that, but it was like, what are they showing? Wow. All right, one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. How often do women do this? How often do women offer these uh, outrageous offers to get out of uh, some responsibility? Brandy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I just found your show about a week ago because I'm serving on jury duty, so I just want to tell you I love it. Thank you. But, um, I have three things to say. One is I think that because she pr propositioned and acted like a prostitute, she should have been charged with solicitation. So that's one thing. I have used womanly wiles to get what I want. For instance, I got into a car accident, and I don't know if you know anything about those, but you don't. they don't decide fault right away. It goes to arbitration, da 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 well, I didn't want to pay the $500 deductible because I didn't feel I was at fault. So I called around to some places until I got a young guy on the phone and talked him into, if I took my car to his shop, that he would waive the deductible for me, which he did. No favors or promise, just flirting and things like that. Most recently, I bought a new car because that car had been totaled <clears throat> in another accident. And um, the sticker price of my car was 25 6 and because I negotiated with a man who obviously had the hots for me, even though I had my children there with me and my wedding ring on, decided that I was going to pay $17,000 for a car, a 2006 Sorento, that was sticker price at 25 6 So you don't have to promise necessarily to give them anything. You can just flirt, and my children were there. My wedding ring was on. I made no promises. And he just gave me a good deal. So you do this regularly or just a couple of times you do it? I'm a very financially savvy woman. And I realize that men, especially in the business world, I work for the third largest financial institution in the Western United States. And I realize that if making myself seem flirtatious is going to get me a better deal as it would a man walking in the door because they think that men know more about finances than women do in most cases, this is a fact, then I'm going to use that to my advantage. Why should I pay something? Why should I pay two or three or four or five or even $6,000 more for something that a man would pay the price that I So when you go home and tell your husband you've got a great deal on a car, does he know what you had to do to get it? Oh, absolutely. So I he knows you I do that. I took the car for a test drive, drove the kids home, told my husband, I said, I'm negotiating with this guy. And I'm flirting with him, and I'm going to get a good deal on the car. Do you like it? And he said, yeah. He's like, do what you got to do. He's like, he do knows what you got to do. Well, not so much as sex or anything like that, but flirt. And, you know, I'm not going to let them take advantage of me. I said, look, my Isaac score is 780. I have several thousand dollars in my checking. What if you could have gotten the car for cost? Well, the point was is that at that point I had done a lot of investigations on the internet for the crash test in this car my other car my two children would have been killed had i not dropped them off and this is the car that i wanted and i called three other dealerships the lowest that they were offering me based on me telling them that i was getting an 18.5 offer at that dealership was 17.5 i went on blue book the, the average car was being sold for 23.6 not 25 right 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 right, right. But, but, but listen 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 i mean how far would you go if you could get an even better deal i would not have sex all right, would, would you let somebody touch your boobs? No, never. I think that that is a slut. There's a difference between using your wiles to get the deal that you should have gotten in the first place and mm. being a prostitute or a hooker. And that is where you need to draw the line as a woman. So what's the furthest you would go? Just flirting. You know, make flirting. him think maybe that I would go out on a date with him. Make him think, you know, touch his hand. You're so cute. You're handsome. Wow. Do you work out? I mean, men are just gullible when it comes to... Oh, I, I agree that many of them are, and I, I'm well aware about women like you, and what I would always say is I would say, well, tell you what, we'll talk about this car over dinner. We're talking about this car over a drink. But I have the resources to back me up. I've done my research. So even if they're saying, well, this is this, I can say, well, the Internet says this. Kelly Blue Book says this. Blobity, says blue, this. blue, but I can tell you right now that if uh, <laughs> if you were flirting with me to try to get me to give you a better deal... I'd make sure I was going to get something before I gave it to you. Unlike most guys who I agree with you would fall for that. 
Or you just go to the sales manager or the fleet manager. Have I ever taken any type of physical touching or compensation? No, absolutely not. And I never would. And my husband knows that. But the fact is, is that I'm going to use not only my intelligence, but the way that I look to benefit me. Well, these guys are idiots. When the woman offered to show herself, instead of just flirting, when the woman offers to show herself, that is prostitution. Well, that by law, that's not prostitution because prostitution means, yeah, no, it's really not because you have to, you have to have sex with somebody for it to be prostitution. But she solicited for it. No. And if that was a man in the reverse but, situation to a female cop, they would have charged him with something other than a one day. DUI that's because, death. that's because we have double standards in the society. Which sucks. That's the way it is. Yeah, so I see both sides of the picture, but there's one thing in flirting and, you know, tossing your hair, and there's a completely other when you're offering a sexual favor to get something or even making them seem like they're going to get a sexual favor. He he had asked me out, and he said, do you want to go out? And I said, oh, I'm married. You know I can't do that. And he's like, your husband doesn't know, have to know anything. And I said, oh, but I would know. But, you know, you say it with a way like, oh, to make them maybe think, but never do. Hang on a second, Brandy. Chuck, what did you want to say to Brandy here? Chuck? Offer something, follow through. This girl is nothing but a tease, and that's worse than my book. Get a man's hopes up, and they're like, okay, thanks for the great deal. You saw the ring, now tie it up. If he's stupid enough to fall for it, then how am I a tease? Well, a married woman teasing is about as worse than a woman offering anything. And a, and a married man giving a deal to a man for $20,000 and giving it to a woman for twenty five hey, that's not wrong? He, he didn't start flirting with you. you. You were messing with his hormones. Oh, no, he started with me first. Believe uh, me. See, now the story's changing. You first said you're using your womanly wild. He didn't started flirting with me first. I said I used my womanly wild. But the question, did he start flirting with me first, was never asked. Maybe you should raise your volume. It, it don't matter. You're teasing the man. And that's Listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. He flirted with me. I could tell that he liked me. Why not use it to my benefit? If the situation were reversed and it was a woman and you looked as good as I do, you would do the same thing, and you it, it don't, know it. It don't change anything. You're a tease. Call it what you want to call it, but if the situation were reversed and a woman was interested in you and they were going to give you $5,000 off of your vehicle, would you not flirt? And don't you dare say no because you would be a liar. No, I'm a married man. I respect it. I'm not going to flirt with another woman just you to lie get like money that. off. You lie. I'm not a, I'm not a tease. You lie. If, if I, I, if I, I offer something, I, I follow through with it. At least I can be honest with what I do. Oh, if I every want married person, I'm Every married person who is secure in their relationship will tell you that they look at other people. I point out women to my husband, God, I wish I had her ass. She wishes, but I wish I had her ass. Yeah, but I never well, tease her first. Tell me that you would not flirt if the situations were reversed and if Say you have horrible credit, and they were offering to, your bank was offering to give you twenty percent, and the woman was flirting with you. You would sit there and tell me that you would tell her, "Don't you dare flirt with me! I'm a married man. Give me a break. At least I can be honest with it." No, I wouldn't. I would I not flirt. Be like, like, you know what? I appreciate it, but I'm not going to flirt with you. Um, is he lying? I I, I don't know. I, for, for, honest, put it Tom. this way. Let me let me put it this way, Brandy. There's very few women who would ever do that if they were selling cars or anything else. It just doesn't happen. Well, most time women don't sell cars, and that's for a reason. Oh, well, if they're selling anything, it doesn't matter. I mean, the fact is uh, that uh, women don't come on to men like, oh, please do me. That's true. They don't. I mean, women will all, women, women when they're selling will unbutton their top couple of buttons, and yes, they'll wear short skirts, uh, but they will not ask you to do them as a favor. I've never had a man ask me to do him. Well, the, <laughs> I've never had a man. I've well, had a man flirt with me and ask me out. To this guy, guy asked me this out, guy you're talking about wanted you to uh, wanted you to go out with him and have sex yes, with. He did. Him. He wanted me to go out to dinner with him. He said, "Why don't we Why don't we go out to dinner sometime? Why don't we go and hang out and have drinks?" And I said, "Well, number one, I don't drink." I said, "Number two, I'm married." And he goes, "Oh, he but your husband, wouldn't, you your husband eat. wouldn't have to know." And and my kids, after I dropped off my kids, is when all this started. But you I wouldn't have asked if you didn't tease him. No, 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 honey, I don't tease. You it's said you if I don't for womenly wild. Now you're changing your story. That's womenly wild is not teasing. Womenly wild yes, it is. That is, is my teasing. That's, that's advantage. That's, not as, that's as flaunting things. your little woman goodies. Like, like oh, look at me, look at me, you look at me. Go look into at me. The dictionary and look at it. Let me give you the definition of tease. A definition of a tease is somebody who strokes or will implicate that they are going to give a sexual favor and then don't. If I were a tease, I would have gone out to dinner with him, rubbed his leg, and then walked out. 
That is a tease. Uh, no, you, you flirt with them. You let him flirt. You're a tease. I'm a flirt. There, I am not a tease. I never promised him anything. I never gave him me. any invitation if there was anything. There you is say a with me. I'm Look a it tease. up, sweetie. Look it up, <laughs> sweetie. Google it. I'll help you. To go www.google.com. All right, all right, all right. All right, guys, uh, I think we've taken this as far as we can take it. I thank you both. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Dan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Dan. Let's say hello to Justin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Ah, what's going on? Not much, Justin. Man, that girl and your lying there is just driving me nuts. Listen to that. I can't believe her. <laughs> you know, ask her how she got her man to marry her. She probably flirted with him a little bit, gave it up a little bit, right? Lured him in. There you go. She's just like the women you tell us about. I mean, she's got it down. It sounds like she got out a dictionary and got out terms to say, what prostitution is and everything, define it to us, you know? Yeah. So she knows what limits to go right to. But, you know, when they're down and out, a woman like her, and when they got certain things, when they need money and everything else, she's going to go to going beyond flashing her boobs and everything else. You know? It's ridiculous. But anyways, what I want to say is, uh, are you there? No, I left the room. <laughs> I'm not here. What I want to say is, you know, women are scandalous, man. If I would have listened to you years ago, you know, I want to be in my situation. I am. But uh, I want to say that everything you say is right. And there's plenty of women out there. I know you don't believe in paying for, you know, paying for it or anything like that. But you're going to pay a lot more if you're dating, married the woman or anything else. But uh, I've bailed a girl out of jail. I've known him for a few years, and we were friends with benefits, and uh, she owed me some favors she said she would do and everything else, and uh, it worked out great, you know? I mean, you're going to pay for it either way. She told me she'd pay me back with favors and pay me back money. She did both. And then all of a sudden in the mail, I got a check back from the state for the money that I put up for her. Look at you. Wow. Yeah. But long story short, everybody should listen to you because, I mean, uh, I'm going to rule to her now. I'm married with three kids, you know. And You sound like you're, ready, to, you sound like you're ready to kill yourself over there. What? You sound like you're ready to kill yourself. No, not at all. Like a beaten dog. Yeah, yeah I'm married. I got three kids now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, I hear these stories on here and everything, you know, and you did it to yourself, you know. I mean, you got some knowledge there. You've been through everything, and not just that, but you got millions of callers or hundreds of thousands. I don't know what what your numbers are, but calling you, and you listen to them every day, and you know you go through everything. And that's why I can tell the people who are ready to kill themselves. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. This is Al on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. I have a question. Do you have any more room in your classroom? Because I want to be joining it pretty soon. Okay, um, my story is, you're, you're not going to believe this. Um, when I used to work a drive through late, a graveyard shift, um, there'd be, you know, I'd always work the weekends because it was always busy. Many, many drunk couples would come by. Even cars full of girls would church, waste it. You know, unbelievable. And, you know, it's busy, so on, ordering whatever. And they come up to the window, and then they're, like, short of cash or, like, Oh, could you could you let me slide or anything? I'd be like, no, that's not, no. I'm sorry, you got to take off certain things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so they're like, okay, well, I had this one chick offered a phone number. I was like, what the hell is a phone number for? I, I don't need it. You know, whatever. And then she's like, uh, how about a kiss on the cheek? And I'm like, no, sorry, pay up or you know, take something off. And then she kept going on. She's like, okay, how about if I show you my boobs? And I looked at her, and I was like, yeah, right, let's see. And then they're like, all right, ready? One, two, three. And then those things were so huge. I've had this happen more than once. Really? Especially in one night. In one night. I don't know, maybe it was like New Year's Eve. I can't, I couldn't remember. I had, even the guys, guys were offering the girls to do that, to to show some jugs. Wow. It was unbelievable. I'm in shock. 
No, 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 no. This thing, I've had it happen so many times. Okay, check this out. A car full of lesbians. Saying, I'll go ahead and kiss my girlfriend or whatever. I was like, okay, fine. That's what. That's cool. And then they start going at it like, like, like they're at home. Is that so? Yeah. I've seen everything. I've had... Okay, one more time. One more one. There's... I guess they were best friends when they were wasted, coming by, a lesbian chick, whatever, you know. She's like, hey, you know, I'll show you my boobs for a drink. I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. So she went in and she's like, okay, cool. I was like, all right. She's like, oh, I want something else. I was, uh, can I, I'll show you again. I was like, nah, I already seen them. She's like, hmm, all right, how about my butt? And I was like, yeah, right, let's see. And sure enough, she got out of the car, unbuckled her pants and zipped, and boom, bare ass. <laughs> well, Al, thank you so much for that uplifting story. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-866. Soon as she got pregnant, she decided what she didn't want to give no more homage. Well, if I do that for you, you have to buy me a minivan. You know what? I bought her a minivan. Did you get a PJ for that? Yeah, matter of fact, I did. There you go, you see? The Tom Likas Show. Eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Here we are from the studios of Paramount Pictures in Hollywood. And uh, our question for you: I'm just wondering how many women offer to do racy or even demeaning, disgusting things when they get into trouble or they need something. Just curious, Gina on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Um, second time, long time. Thank you. I just wanted to call and share my story with you. Um, it's not necessarily that I did anything to get out of trouble. I just, I like to have fun. I'm a single girl, and I like to play with guys sometimes and do things that some other girls wouldn't do. Um, but one time, me and my girlfriends, we went out. Actually, um, I went out with two other girlfriends, three of us total, and um, one has a boyfriend, one was kind of seeing someone they're both kind of uptight but we went out to a restaurant and it's kind of a restaurant bar area and i don't know if i can say that the name of it on on it's the not, air not but, relevant um, really okay so we went there and we saw this group of beautiful gorgeous men and they had a couple girls with them but we didn't know if like you know they were their girlfriends or what but we noticed that they kept turning around to look at us and so we're kind of like you know smiling laughing looking at them and my friend was like pointing at her drink, like, hello, you're going to buy us some drinks since you, you keep turning around looking at us. So we went to the bathroom. We had recently saw a movie. I know you probably know what movie we're talking about. And I try, I try to convince them because they're really uptight and goody goods, and I'm like the wild, crazy one. And we went to the bathroom, took off our underwear, came back. It's actually me and one friend. The other one wouldn't do it. Um, and literally gets, gave them a peep show. Um, and the more rounds that they bought, um, the more – things that we did all right I, I, I guess i should say the the wider we really <laughs> yes and i just want to say that i think what the lady did was showing her boob to the cop was not a big deal i mean well she didn't uh, wait she did not actually get to show them she, she offered to show yeah i mean i know so many girls who do that they do anything to get out of a ticket and that bimble brandy that called earlier what's the difference she's flirting in front of her children pinning her leg on a guy to the point where he's asking her out to dinner obviously he must thought something and for her to judge other women and call them prostitutes for doing something or offering to do something is ridiculous because she's the same thing she may use different techniques to do it but she's doing the exact same thing and what type of example is she setting for her kid when she's a married woman and so now her kids see how to bat their eyelashes and flirt with the guy and touch his leg to get what they want. So I don't like women who judge other women like that because they do the same exact thing, but only maybe in a different way, and they consider what they do okay, but what other women do is... Well, she's raising more. a future generation of gold diggers is what she's she doing. She definitely is. And yes. I think what's wrong with that? It's a free country. We should all be allowed to do whatever we want. If I want to sit there and give a guy, you know, favors or do something for him sexually, there should be no problem with that. I don't even think, you know, prostitution should be illegal, but that's a whole other issue. But I just wanted to call and share that. 
that with you. Well, thank you for that, Gina. I appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. You know, we got this online stream, and people listen to us all around the world in cities where you cannot hear our show. Sarah is calling from New York City on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Well, I mean, I've used people before. I actually used to think it's fun. I still actually do. How do you I do mean, it? I use... <laughs> huh? How do you do it? Um, you just pr- pretend that you're really interested, and you pretend that you're going to give them some, and guys are usually gullible. Sometimes you don't even have to meet them for them to buy you stuff, for them to wire you money. You just have to know what to say to them and pretend that, you know, you're going to be with them and that you're going to give them lots of sex. But you don't, actually, paid. Huh? you don't actually give them any sex? No, you don't. No, you don't. Now, let me ask. Yo, go ahead. Yeah, tell is, us. The closest you came. Yeah is having a this old guy who used to pay my rent. <laughs> That's the closest I came. And then he had the nerve to want his money back because I didn't want to put out, but then I changed my number, so that was done. But if a woman doesn't put is out... Is it really worth it? I mean, wouldn't you be better off just, like, getting a job and paying your own bills? I do have a job, but it's, it's better when someone's giving you stuff. Yeah, but uh, isn't it better just to, like, make... Maybe you need to make more money. Well, whatever the money that you have, why should you spend when you can get more? Well, because, dear, you're not getting it for free. Well, actually, you are. No, you're really not because you're selling off a piece of your heart, a piece of your soul, a piece of your... uh, Your your heart is not into it because if it is, I mean, people... Dear, you have to demean demean yourself. You have to demean yourself to get something for quote-unquote free. This is the thing I talk to women about all the time. You know, when you go out with a guy you're not attracted to because you want to eat at a nice restaurant... You're not getting that for free. First of all, those three hours of your life, you're never getting back. The time you have to sit with him in the car or the cab. First of all, the the time that I spent with him was mostly on the phone. Sometimes I would go if I wanted to go to a nice, you know, hotel or something. I would tell him to, you know, pay for the hotel. And most of the time I would tell him I had my period so he wouldn't bother me. So wait, 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 wait. So you would go to a hotel with the guy. And you what, take your clothes off? You'd be in bed with him? Why? Not with him. I've had him pay for hotels and then invited my boyfriend later on. I've never... But wait, wait, wait. If he paid for the hotel, you're telling me he wasn't there? No, he was not. So what was it? Why in the world would he want to pay... Why in the world would he want to pay for a hotel room for you? Because he liked me as a person, because I'm a good person. He didn't know what kind of uh, the person you were. If he knew what kind of person you really were, he wouldn't like you as a I person. I don't think I'm a bad person. I just think at the time... So you think getting you old know, guys to pay for things, that, that's perfectly legitimate, that's a good thing to do, and you feel you know, good about it? If you're an old guy, why are you going out after someone who is younger than you? Obviously, you, you know why? <laughs> because, uh, let's face it, if you do that, you don't need uh, Viagra or Cialis or anything like that. Well, they don't usually get anything, but they get used and have their money taken, so they should expect that. So, I mean, so you admit you're, you're taking advantage of these guys? No, they're taking advantage of themselves. No, they're really not, because they're not getting anything. So that's their problem. No, no, but dear, again, you're, what's amazing to me, by the way, your boyfriend, why does he tolerate it? Um, I don't know why he tolerates it. Usually he doesn't Is he a know. loser, too? Huh? Is he a loser also? No, he's not a loser. I'm not a loser. Oh, if you need to do these things, you. by the way, what do you need a hotel room for? Don't you have an apartment? No, before I used to like to travel back and forth because I used to live in upstate. So I used to have him pay for my hotel because I didn't you know, want to spend my money to pay for one because you know, I was a student and stuff. So where were you going, like Albany or something? No, I was going towards... A little bit towards Rochester, but in Canandaigua. Okay. So. Canandaigua, um, home of the Beach Not Baby Food Company. <laughs> I don't know, but I used. I I'm went sure you there, don't. But I I'm from New York, but I used to go up there. So. My well, what's a hotel room in Canandaigua going for? Twenty nine dollars a night these days? No, 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 no. I used to live in Canandaigua and go down here, point blank. Oh. I used to go visit my ex boyfriend. Point blank. That's out of York. Long Island, isn't it? What? I'm from New York, New York City. I live in New yes, York City right now. I know. Now, but I live times. in Canadagua. Yes. Okay. And the hotels here used to be like two, three hundred dollars, and I wasn't going to pay that amount for a hotel. I see. So, how did you meet these uh, these uh, uh, pervs in uh, Manhattan? How did you meet them? 
Well, sometimes I would, they would approach me. Sometimes I would go and call dating things, and they would see my picture, and they would say, hey, you know, I'm interested in you. And, you know, I would give them a chance if I liked them. You would give them a chance. Did you ever have sex with any of them? No. No. So you weren't giving anybody a chance. You were just using anybody you could. It wasn't really using because I cared for him as a person. You cared for him as a person. Oh, don't. You know what? You, you lie to yourself, lie to your boyfriend, but I don't know how long you've been listening he to this was show. Old, okay. I, mean, I don't care how old he is. What do you mean you cared for you cared for him while you were taking his money? Don't look. Just tell me. You took from him and you feel justified in taking from him because he wanted sex. He but it. don't give me this thing about you cared about wrong, him. You didn't give a rat's ass about him. You didn't care about him at all. I did too care, but no, he, you got, didn't. he got angry because he wasn't getting what he wanted. Of course he got angry. Well, he shouldn't have gave, you know. You can't give someone. Yeah, he shouldn't have gave. That's right. What school was that you went to, by the way? (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) He shouldn't have given if he would have felt the way he did now. Yeah, but again, he believed that you were serious. He believed that you were going to give him what you were implying you were going to give him. You no, you please. were dishonest. You misled him intentionally, and then you can't believe he got upset. Well, yeah, because I didn't ask him. Well, actually, I did, but he didn't have to give. You know, he chose to. Right, and you so know, what was his instead of... Choice. He's older than me. He should know better. Uh, <laughs> Derek, you would be amazed how many women your age will put out for a 60-year-old guy with money. You would be shocked. Well, that's the... Um, I wouldn't put out for... 60 year old guy for money well uh, well maybe i don't know uh, <laughs> it would depend depend <laughs> on I, what if i would have a ring i i would then i could get half so but. you'd marry a 60 year old guy to get half of what he has yes but i wouldn't put out mm, but you wouldn't put and, out and unless i was married i wouldn't put out uh, but if you married I a 60 year old guy you don't put out so in other words you your say- vagina is for sale you just the you're just you, selling it to the highest bidder. The more you you don't put out, the more you'll get. It so you have a matter. boyfriend, but if a sixty year old guy with money, say Donald Trump, came along and said, "You know what?" The, I would leave my boyfriend. Yes, you'd leave yes. your boyfriend. But that that boy does your boyfriend know this? Um, no, he doesn't know this. Let's call him right now and tell him. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> let's see how he feels about that. Well, uh, you wouldn't sure. mind calling him, would you? Let's call him right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's you, your boyfriend. You can be honest with him, right? Yeah. I don't you, think I... He's your best friend. You can tell him anything. Well, no. A relationship has nothing to do with one or the other. So, in other words, you're with your boyfriend because you're actually available to the highest bidder, and right now he's the best offer you've gotten so far. Oh, my boy, my boyfriend's not very rich. He's no, but again, it's, a, it's the total package. Right now, he's the best offer you've got. Right now, I have feelings for him, but doesn't mean I'm going to want to marry him. Or, uh-huh. you know, I mean, I'm still young. I'm, you know, in life, financial stability is important. And if women don't realize... so, that, And your sexuality is for sale. You just made that clear. Well... Yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. So if Alex Rodriguez left his uh, wife and left the stripper and offered to marry you, you'd be in. Well, yeah. If, if it's marriage, yeah, why not? You'll you'll get better results in the long run than get, you know, a broke guy. Yeah, you, you're, you're probably, by the way, you're probably like an ice cube in the sack. You probably suck in bed. <laughs> I probably don't. I don't think so. No, I dare believe me. I've talked to your type before. Those of you who sell it, it's rarely worth buying. Honey, first of all, I'm not. It's not like I'm sexually active to the highest bidder. I'm very precautious. You just, I'm you with. just made it really I'm clear. You just made it really clear. You are, you are for sale for the, to the highest bidder. Yeah, if for marriage, there's a big difference be, between being for sale. First of all, when you're married, it's technically a, an arrangement. You anyway. would dump your boyfriend for some rich old man. You already admitted it. Yes, I would. I never said. And I would. yet, you're so dishonest. You would not tell him that because it's my business. No, 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 dear. He's your boyfriend. He's your best friend. I first, I don't know what you're talking about. It's yeah, I know you don't. I know you don't. Because you have absolutely no moral center at all. None. None. You have no scruples. And you're another example of why I love living alone. Who needs women, for God's sake? The Tom Likas Show.